Okay, guys, yesterday we discussed part one of the Breonna Taylor drug cartel, the evidence that the police gathered during their four years of surveillance, of following her and her cohorts around, watching them with cameras, the whole nine, just years of surveillance all stemming from the 2016 murder of Fernandez Bowman who was found in a car rented by Breonna Taylor. So there's ton, there was tons of evidence and listen, they're not going to do all that just because you black. They're not going to say that it wasn't no coincidence why they did surveil them and did investigated them and put all those resources, all those man hours into it. But what we did learn is that that syndicate was a very, 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 very thorough <laughs> group. I mean, they was about it, about it. And they we're not no beginners so it, we left off with Brianna being shot and all the guys being locked up everybody else in the crew being locked up so now they're in the jail okay it's 8.52 the morning of when Brianna got killed it's 8.52. She got killed earlier that morning. Jamarcus Glover, who's the central figure, one, another central figure in all of this, is a.k.a. Chapo, is calling his baby mother from jail. She picks up the phone. She says, Chop, that girl got killed over you. Why would you say that shit over me, though? All my mail and shit, my mail and shit, it ain't got nothing to do, Bree's house. But no, remember you had that bank statement in that other box, and you leave that shit behind. For them to hit your house in that, putting two and two together, come on, Chop, the way you move, period dude told me I just seen you leave your baby mama's house they know where we live at Kiara they been knowing where we live at that's what they find out when they got an investigation on a motherfucker they gonna find out everything at the end of the day it's all bullshit. It's some sugar for some spaghetti we ate. They know that me and you hadn't been fucking around. That's probably why they didn't come to my house. But I feel like Chop, if they know it's my house, why the fuck wouldn't they have a search warrant? They know I was there before. They would have came in there. Did you tell them it was your baby mama's house? Well, then, why the fuck are you putting me on this motherfucking case, my nigga? Because you the one they want. I don't know how much it's going to take for you to know that you the one they want, Chop. I'm hurt my name getting called about Bree's death. This nigga Kenneth Walker in jail. This nigga got Bree dead. At the end of the day, it was not my fault. It's this nigga's fault that's in here. The reason why it happened, the nigga is sitting right here. Okay, did y'all talk or is he still on some defensive shit? He said they were beating on the door. 
Okay, so let's stop right there. That is what Kenneth Walker told the paper down there in Louisville. That they were knocking on the door. So this narrative about the no-knock warrant is horse shit. It's horse shit. Everything Rand Paul is doing with Brianna's Law and ending no-knock warrants, it's horse shit. It's a lie. It's just like hands up, don't shoot. It's a lie. The police knocked on the door so hard, neighbors who lived in the apartment building were in the hallway trying to figure out what was going on. And the newspapers know this. CNN knows this. MSNBC knows this. They've, there's articles written about this. They were knocking so hard that they woke up the neighbors and the neighbors came into the hallway to see what was going on. Kenneth told the reporters that they, they knocked. Now, this is him hours after Brianna got killed. Jamarcus Glover is saying that Kenneth told him that they were beating on the door. Isn't that crazy? So the baby mother responds. So the baby mother responds. Yeah, so I would shoot too. Like I got a gun under my bed. If someone come in my house at 12 o'clock at night, I would shoot too. I got to protect my kids. So then the baby mother responds after Jamarcus Glover tells her that Kenneth Walker told him that the cops were beating on the door. Yeah, so I would shoot too. Like I got a gun under my bed. If someone come in my house at 12 o'clock at night, I would shoot too. I got to protect my kids. You have got to stop moving so messy. You are the one they want. Okay, so later on, three hours later, two and a half hours later, Jamarcus Glover calls his baby mother again this time from his dormitory room as soon as the baby mother Kiara answers the phone he tells her to call Damo aka Dominique Crenshaw the line goes silent she calls Damo on three way and then she says, Chop, he's on there. Then Jamarcus Glover, Chapo, says, What up, Damo? Kenneth just got her killed, nigga. Sitting in his jail like it's all good. Like he's straight. Like it ain't his fault. So he the one shooting the gun? Yeah. He shoots at the police. They shoot back. Bree in the hallway and she gets killed. Then Dominique Crenshaw gets off of the phone. And the conversation resumes between Jamarcus Glover and his baby mother. Where he said, where she says, They searched that Crown Vic you had. 20,000 in the Crown Vic? Hell no, nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't been in the Crown Vic. That's where you've been hiding shit. Where your money at? I was in the house, 2424 Elliott Avenue. They found that shit outside. Dariel wants to talk to you. What's his number so I can three-way? So then Jamarcus Glover gives her the phone, his phone number. She calls Darielle on three-way. And then Jamarcus Glover says to Darielle, they hit the house last night. Bree got killed last night. 
I just got off the phone with Damo. I'm fixing to come back up there. And then that conversation is over. And then a little while later, Jamarcus Glover calls again back to his child's mother from the dormitory in the jail. And she picks up and says, everybody's calling because they're saying your baby mama got killed. Brianna's mama and the No Limit crew, they basically like the nigga that she was fucking with got her all caught up. The No Limit crew, they don't play. Man, I don't care. I know you don't care. You don't care about shit. Motherfuckers putting it to me like it came from you. Of course, I'm going to think that. And I know that I found mail and shit. Me and Bree ain't been around each other in over two months. I ain't got nothing going on with Bree no more. So the tension is building between Jamarcus and his baby mother over his relationship with Brianna Taylor. And a side note, these guys are talking on the phone, the jail phone, after their high, all their drug houses got hit simultaneously. The only reason the other house didn't get hit was because they Brianna got killed and they had to call off the operation. That's the only reason the baby mother's house didn't get hit. So, these guys are talking on the jail phone like they're not under investigation. We hear a lot about snitching in the black community. Snitching, snitching, snitching. Everybody snitching. Everything snitching except for snitching. <laughs> you push your old lady down the steps and take her social security check If she go to the police she's snitching <laughs> you shoot your girlfriend she go to the police she's snitching everything's snitching and snitching and snitching in the black community these niggas is talking on the jail phone after they've been in an investigation for four years <laughs> and all their drug houses just got hit and all of them sitting in jail and they're talking this shit on the jail phone but oh it gets deeper so at 12.58, a little while later, Jamarcus Glover calls another female named Portia Moore. Kenneth Walker said they knocked on the door, but he didn't know who it was. They asked who it is, but don't nobody say nothing. He said they kicked the door. Kenneth Walker said they knocked on the door, but he didn't know who it was. They asked who it is, but don't nobody say nothing. He said they kicked that door, and he balked on them. He said they started shooting back, and Bree was in the hallway, and she called bullets. My lawyer, Scott, he knows Bree. He knows her. He been dealing with me and Bree the whole time. I've been going through this shit. So then about eight minutes later, Jamarcus Glover, a.k.a. Chapo, calls his baby mother back. And she says, So where the money at? Where my money at? Bree had like eight grand. Bree had eight grand of your money? Yeah. And then an unknown male joined the call on three way. And Jamarcus Gullover told him, tell cuz Bree got down like 15 grand. She had eight grand I gave her the other day and she picked up another six grand. So now 
there's tension between the baby mother and Glover over him, <laughs> over Brianna having this guy's money. But the, she doesn't understand that Brianna's an integral part of the drug cartel. It's not like a girlfriend boyfriend thing. She's the money person for the for the for the clique. But she's thinking more of it like, oh, you messing with your ex? You used to mess with her, and she got your money. So the baby mother's more thinking of it more on some emotional level. But Jamarcus is like, man, she just that she hold the money for the for the crew. She she the you know she the, that's her her one of her jobs. She rent the cars. She hold the money. She. <laughs> You know, she 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 the this, the product get dropped off at her house. It's like she's she's a focal uh, a, a focal point in this whole thing. She's the linchpin of the whole operation. She's just as important as he is. But the baby mother's not trying to hear that because she's upset about his, him messing around with his ex girlfriend and her having his money. So she goes on to say. Because my feelings are hurt. Why? Because the bread was at her house. This is what you got to understand. Don't take it wrong. But Bree been handling all my money. She been handling my money. She been handling shit for me and cuz. It ain't just me. But I mean, she should at least tell you where your money is, chop. I can't talk to you on this phone, but I will tell you exactly the reason why. She should tell you where your money is. When you got money at the house, I tell you exactly where it is. It's no problem. I can walk in Bree house and go directly to whatever it is. No problem with it. And then they keep arguing and arguing and arguing. And then the baby mother says, Motherfuckers is posting videos of you and all that. Who posts videos of me? This bitch Brianna Taylor. Where she been with you since you ain't been over at my house? The same day you post a picture, I guess she post a video. You knew it because... She said, what's up? She was in the bed with you. You kissing all over her? This shit is embarrassing. But then that conversation ends. And then, later on in the day, Jamarcus Glove, a.k.a. Chapo, calls Adrian Walker, who's basically like second in command. He like the, the number two guy to him. As far as the the men in the in the organization, and Adrian picks up the phone and says, "She already got your money, but uh, she picking up the money for Keisha, though. How much is it for Keisha? A thousand. Everybody shit a thousand. Nope, Tink, five thousand. Bees, ten thousand. They're talking about the bales." Each of the people who got arrested bail, bail money. Then Jamarcus Glover says, for real, we'll get them 10% in the morning. We just got to make sure their lawyers show up. Call Rika on three-way. It's going straight to voicemail. So then that conversation ends after he, he can't contact Rika. And then he calls his baby, then Jamarcus calls his baby mother back. And she picks up and says, it ain't even really about Brianna. Because I already know. Motherfuckers done already gave me the blueprint on everything. I know she was fucking with you. You bounce back and forth between these bitches. And I'm not doing none of that. It's messy. That could have been me, bro. Could have been you because you around a nigga. No, because I'm around you. You bring a mess on yourself. You think a motherfucker trying to criticize you. 
you bring shit on yourself like the messiness. It's how you move, how you're so flamboyant, how you putting shit out. I don't even know what I got myself into. You want me to text your side bitch Rika? She got gas to get up there to you. You act like a motherfucker can't be mad. I got your daughter and you tell me you got money somewhere else? When you're out here risking your life and your freedom every motherfucking day? Like I can call Brianna and ask Bri to do anything for my daughter. So then they continue to argue about how he hasn't seen his daughter in weeks. And then he says, Jamarcus, Jamarcus Glover says, it don't matter. I ain't been at nobody's house. I've been in the trap. And then that conversation ends. And this nigga gets off the phone with her. And then he calls his alleged side chick, Rika, <laughs> a.k.a. Rebrika Johnson. And says... How much money at your house? Whatever you put there. I didn't count all that money. Count the rubber bands and let me know how much is there. Okay, I'll call you when I get home. It's going to be a minute. Love you. Love you too. And that conversation is, this nigga is not only a player, he's the president. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga is a bro. He, he, he got all these girls. Well, basically, it's only three: Rika, Brianna, and Baby Mama. So then, a little while later, Jamarcus Glover calls Adrian Walker and says. Where you at? You know the spy E. I just watched the news, nigga. They trying to act like they had a search warrant for Bree's house, too. I know. The only thing I can figure out is they checked that license plate. They been putting investigation on a motherfucker. They checked Bree's license plate. That's the only thing I can think of. A motherfucker pull up on the block in a charger. That's the only thing I can think of. Who had no haters running their mouth? That nigga Kenneth Walker didn't have no business doing that shit. That nigga got Bree killed, nigga. You gotta see the bigger picture to it, though. You feel me? It's more to it than that. Than what you feeling right now. I know, I know. She was feeling me. At the end of the day, everything's stolen from me, though. I swear, I know that. That man tell me I watch you leave your baby mama's house. All right, if you watch me leave my baby mama's house, why would you execute a warrant at Bree's house? Bree got that charger and all that shit. Bree's paper trail makes sense for everything she got, though. I don't understand how they serve a warrant for Bree's house when nothing ties me to Bree. Oh. I don't understand how they serve a warrant for Bree's house when nothing ties me to Bree's house at all except these bonds. Bonds and cars in 2016. It's just ties though. Look at the ties since 2016. Ever since Rambo and the camera right there they see a motherfucker pull up now Rambo is Fernandez Bowman the guy who was killed in 2016 which started this investigation when they found that guy dead in the car and it was rented by Brianna they went and interviewed Brianna and everything started then so Marcus Glover goes on to say, yeah, 
Brianna was out there the top of the week before I went to court. They didn't even have to see her pull up. All they had to do is see that license plate. They done put two and two together. Then on top of that, they go over there and find money. No, Bree don't, Bree don't, Bree don't. Bro, you know how Bree do. They didn't find nothing in her house. I thought you said they found some money over there. It was there. It was there. It was there. They didn't do nothing, though. That's the problem. Kenny said ain't none of that go on. And the reason they didn't search Brianna's house because once they killed her, it became a homicide investigation. They didn't, like, break down the walls and search behind, you know, floorboards and all that stuff where, you know, money would be hidden. They just, you know, made it a, 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 a murder investigation. And so no... There was no search of the premises like you or you would do normal during a normal search warrant because Brianna got killed during that and it's they switched gears. Then Anthony Walk then 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 Walker says to um Glover. So they didn't take none of the money? Kenneth Walker said that none of that go on. Okay, so you gotta you gotta be you gotta be very you gotta understand here. You have two walkers. Okay. Okay, so it's very important you have two walkers. You have Adrian Walker, who's still on the streets, who's Jamarcus Glover's right hand man, who's the person he's having this conversation with right now. Then you have Kenneth Walker, who's Brianna's new boyfriend who was the guy who shot at the cops while they were serving the warrant. And now he's also in jail in the same cell with, or the same part of the jail with Jamarcus Glover, okay? So Adrian Walker says, so they didn't take none of the money? Kenneth Walker said that none of that was going on. He said homicide came straight on the scene and they went to packaging Bree and they left. He said they didn't announce themselves or something. He's saying they wasn't. He's saying they were just beating so hard on the door. She was in the hallway in the hallway, nigga. That's just so sad, bruh. You think I ain't hurt, nigga? You know I don't give a f no fuck about nothing but them. Nothing but Brianna. Nothing but Rika. Nothing but baby mama. Them my only three. I don't do shit for nobody else out here, bruh. I told so-and-so, from what I understand, they wasn't fucking with each other. When y'all get Bree phone, y'all need to go on her phone and get that number and see that chop, your number was blocked. Yeah. Me and Brianna t had texted that day, though, big dog. That's the thing. We text that day, nigga. All my life, she texted me and asked me when this stuff coming in for my car. I'm sending everything to her. We on good terms to where she makes sure she gets her shit. She done started fucking with Kenneth, so I'm playing the player. She gonna get tired of this shit, because she always do. I let her do her thing. I can show my phone. I ain't been talking to her at all. But she texted yesterday out of the blue. When this stuff coming in. I was like, I don't know. I'm going to let you know. But they done took the money. 
I sent the tracking information to her. Then she told me I had a hoodie and some shit come in. She told me that shit come in, nigga, on everything. And that's cold words for, you know, receiving, um, you know, drug hoodies. All these are cold words for denominations of drugs and whatnot. Because Brianna's, Brianna's house is where they got the shipments. Because you, you ship through um, U, U.S. Postal Service and all that stuff. So, it is what it is. But he's speaking in code about certain things. And then he not like it's no point of him speaking in code. He might as well just go all the way in because he's giving them everything. The police don't even need to do it. Like they already did an investigation. They already had him nailed. But now he just like basically this is like a cross examination after they injected him with truth serum. This is crazy that he's t talking all this on the jail phone. So then Glover goes on to say, Brianna going to turn her back on me because she loved that nigga Kenneth Walker. That nigga did this shit. At the end of the day, if I would have been at that house, Bri would be alive. I don't shoot at no police. So then he gets off the phone with Adrian Wilson and calls a little lady he calls his baby mother back. And they're arguing again about Brianna. And she says, you had Bree's car on Valentine's Day. We weren't together. You don't care about nothing but money. Then later on, he calls her that night back, calls his baby mother again. That night. And she picks up and she says, They got Bree's address on all your stuff. When I was bonding you out, that's your address. Bree had me on a bond already. She had my bond from old cases. Not that 2018 shit, that old shit. She did Adrian Walker Bond when he was in jail. I don't know how her address on all my paperwork. They got that address long time ago, in 2016, when I was just staying with her then. They watching you. You have to stop thinking about yourself. You acting like you're from Kentucky. This is not where you're from. You are the main target. Who you trying to be? Scarface? And then she goes on in reference to talking to Brianna's family. So the baby mother's been talking to Brianna's family. They don't think your baby daddy got nothing to do with it. He's cool or whatever. They just really angry at the police. And they gonna get Kenny out tomorrow. So the family is not mad at Chapo. They don't think he had anything to do with Brianna's death. But they're gonna bail out Kenneth Walker the next day. And Jamarcus Glover Chapo responds. How you going to bond that man out of jail? This shit happened because of this nigga. He fired shots at the police. And then baby mama starts arguing with him over what if the police would have run in her house last night and he wasn't going to be there and she has a daughter. Then he cuts her off and says, Bree, Bree. And she says, I'm Kiara. I'm Kiara. <laughs> so he accidentally called her Bree. So this dude, he, 
And he got a lot on his mind right now. I can understand. He got a lot on his mind right now. So he 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 talking to this one. He, this one just got killed. This one is tripping off of that one. His money, jail, whole operation down. He trying to get everything straight. He trying to get out. So he ended up. He accidentally called his baby mama Brianna. Then he says, "This is why I keep all this shit away from my house. I don't bring no police to my house." So, wow, crazy, man. Um, this is just insane. This is just insane. Um, this is just insane. We want to finish this up tomorrow, but this is just insane how, um, how crazy this is. They're talking like this on the jail phone. Um, <laughs> Brianna was obviously a very integral part to this syndicate, this cartel, this organization. RIP to her. I, I, I mean, look, she could have been an EMT too. She could have been, I think she was training to be an EMT. Um, it's the hood, man. It's the hood. But I think the biggest thing we come away with in all of this is that the no knock part of the warrant the no knock part is bullshit it's just horse shit they knocked okay and you're gonna learn more about that tomorrow when we finish this up with a part three they knocked and nobody's disputing that I don't even know how that got started. Nobody who was there is said the police are saying we knocked. The neighbors are saying we came out in the hallway because we heard banging. Kenneth Walker, the only person who survived from inside of the house, he's saying they knocked. Can someone in the comment section tell me where the fuck this whole they didn't knock thing come from? No. This whole thing about no knock wards and shit. Where did that come from? Because nobody is saying that. Did the media just make that up? Like, I literally. <laughs> I literally, like, j just puzzled. I'm just puzzled. Like, it's. it's baffling to me where in the world did this no knock stuff come from I need help man where did this no knock stuff come from man where in the world like <laughs> where in the world did they start that from and why is it, why couldn't it just be Brianna was part of a drug organization. She was knee deep in the streets. She was a thug missus. She from the hood. And she still didn't deserve to die. By them trying to make her out to be a saint and an angel and little Miss Perfect who never did anything wrong and just got shot for no reason, they're actually doing her a disservice, man. You know, because the truth, when it comes out, people are going to be disappointed. And they're going to look at it like, oh, man, she wasn't shit. No, she, was, she didn't deserve to die either way. Now, if her boyfriend wouldn't have shot the police officer in the leg. She most likely wouldn't have died. Because this serving warrants in every city, every town, every day. Like here in D.C. They're serving warrants left and right. I've had it happen to me twice. 
this is years ago, but I just know that some division, the narcotics division, the homicide division, some division in a city like New York, D.C., Philadelphia, Louisville, they're serving warrants every single day. All throughout the hoods of Blackistan, Atlanta, Camden, Raleigh, Charlotte. Augusta, Savannah, man. everywhere, Florida, all over Florida, they're serving warrants every day, all day, because it's that much activity going on in the drug game. They're serving them on Mexican gangs, they're serving them on biker gangs, the mafia, <laughs> MS-13, black gangs, all day long. You just don't know about it because you're not a, into that. You're not a drug dealer. You're not in the trap. Okay? This is going on every day, all day. Why is Brianna the only person <laughs> that we got that been killed? Why is it not why is it not hundreds? Why we can't just name rattle off the names of all these black people that been killed for no reason during a during the serving of a warrant? Why can't we just rattle them off? Why is this one? <laughs> Why since Brianna it ain't been none? The crime level has risen in every city. Every city crime has gone through the roof since Black Lives Matter took over. Why it's only one? I just want to know. I just want to know the answers to these questions, man. Why the only one where the girl got killed, they lied through their fucking teeth about the police did not. The only one that they hanging their hat on about racism and shit, the police not. The whole shit about this racist to serve no knock warrants and they only do that to black people. The police knocked. Why is that? I mean, just think about it. Why is that? But I'm going to come back with part three tomorrow, man. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that PayPal. Make sure you hit that cash app. Make sure you hit that super chat. You won't get this anywhere else. Peace.